Hey guys and welcome back to Spooky Witches UK. Um, before I get into today's video I need you to go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me so you can keep seeing my face on your screens. Also when I reach 100 subscribers I'm going to be doing a giveaway over on my Facebook and I will also be running it on Instagram as well. Um, today's video I'm going to be talking about a few different stories that surround the ruined fortress of Corfe Castle that sits in southern Dorset, England. Um, so the first story, which is the main story that I wanted to talk to you about, is about Edward the Martyr. Now, Edward was born around 962. So Edward was the only son of King Edgar the Peaceful and his wife Ethel fled. And whilst Edward was the first son of the king, he was not the heir to the throne. Um, as his father remarried twice and then settled. And had now settled with Queen... Oh, bear with me. I want to say Elfthrith. So we're going to go Elfthrith. Um, they went on to have a son together named Ethelred. The Unready. Um... As half-brother to Edward and with his mother as queen, Ethelred was the valid contender for the throne. Um, and after Edgar's death, there was a family dispute over the over power and this then led to an unimaginable turn of events that is cloaked in mystery. So Edward was just 13 years old when his father passed um, and he claimed her to the throne. But other people were questioning his legitimacy um, because these people that were questioning it supported his younger brother to become king. However, his younger brother was only six or seven at the time and was far too young to be running a kingdom, which made his older brother the more likely choice. But as both boys were still young, the decision of power was led by, a count by council factions and by Ethelred's mother, the queen who wanted to see her son in power. In due course, Edward became king and was crowned with the help of the Archbishop, Archbishop Dunstan of Canterbury, who was part of the young king support base along with Oswald Wor Wor Worcester. I'm gonna go Worcester, who served as Archbishop of York. Now, not much is known about how Edward was as a king. Um, however, different accounts from different important people were painted a conflict in light about him. So, according to Berthworth, who was a priest and a monk based at Ramsey Abbey, he, he was also known to have a bit of a bad temper and this affected people he worked with, but also gave him like an atmosphere of fear. His account was refuted by Osborne of Canterbury, who was a Benedictine monk, and he commented on Edward's character in a more nice term, painting him in a better light, saying that the men around him held him in high regards, but these two accounts only add to the mystery surrounding Edward and his short reign. Now, he was only in power for three years. Now, his accession to the throne was during a power struggle. This made people fear that there was treachery involved. Um, during his so short reign, the so-called anti-monastic -monast reaction took place. Um, and this took place because when his father, King Edgar, was in power, he gave more land and power to the church, um, which in turn angered secure landowners secular landowners so when edward came into power they took this opportunity to seize what they thought was rightfully theirs. now in march of 978 king edward made the decision to visit his half brother at corf castle and was accompanied by a small group of men he was met at the gate by Elfrith's retainers um, and this is where the mystery comes in because that in itself was unusual. Now Edward was assassinated at the gates 
whilst he was waiting to be like waiting to enter um possibly was offered a beverage um of mead whilst he waited and it was here that the assassination took place he was stabbed whilst he was still mounted to his horse dying in the saddle the horse then took off running dragging his body with it no one really knows who like how these events like who set out these events but there was a murder and there was treachery committed and this had massive implications on the throne the kingdom and christianity for years um but that's the story of king edward no it wouldn't be spooky witches if we weren't talking about ghosts so the second part of this so the second part of the history of Cove Castle was during the Civil War. Now, Royalist Banks family, who supported King Charles and the Cavaliers, had moved into the castle and this family had managed to repel many of Cromwell's attacks. This was, however, until they were one day portrayed by somebody on the inside. Um, they had let Cromwell's soldiers into the castle were the attack from the inside. They didn't stop until I think everyone was dead. They seized it um, and they took control of the stronghold. They then subsequently blew up parts of it to stop it from being a stronghold once more. This is also where the ghost of the Lady in White is, apparently. They believe it, it is the person who had betrayed the Banks family in the first place um this ghost can be seen walking the walls and the battlements of the castle now i'm pretty sure king edward's ghost resides there as well so it's definitely somewhere to check out but yeah that is pretty much it for me today guys um it was more of a little brief history lesson than it was anything else um but it was something that I thought I should cover. I'll just let me just get it up and I can see what other ghosts are there. I'm sure they were the main ones, really. Because if you want to check it out, go on the National Trust website because they've got a list of the most haunted places. Um, Now you see, this is saying that the stepmother to Edward was called Elfrida. Which would make more sense. So we're going to go Elfrida for the first story. In the 13th century, King John imprisoned 22 captured Frenchmen in the Corfe dungeons and left them to starve to death. While in 1327, Edward II was imprisoned at Corfe Castle prior to being murdered. And then during the Civil War, Corfe Castle was home to the Royalist Banks family who managed to fend off repeated attempts <clears throat> to take the castle by Cromwell's roundheads, which is Cromwell's soldiers, because you had King Charles Cavaliers and Cromwell's roundheads. But as an act of betrayal in 1645, this allowed the roundheads to smuggle in their own soldiers inside the wall, then they attacked from within and without, the si and without at the same time. So they attacked in the castle and outside the castle and finally seized control. Later that year, they blew up parts of the castle to stop it becoming an opposition stronghold again. But the woman in white is the ghostly figure of a headless woman. Said to be the woman who betrayed the banks and has been stalking the walls and the battlements. And there you go. But yeah, definitely head on to the National Trust website. They have got loads. Um... But that is it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. 
don't forget to push that subscribe button and hit the bell so then you get notified when I upload. So yeah, I love you all. I will see you all on Saturday. Stay safe and as always, stay spooky witches. Bye.